Welcome to the Iron Speed Designer 8.0 video series, Databases Area. Today we're going to be using Iron Speed Designer 8.0 Enterprise Edition and looking at the Databases Area tab. We'll discuss the organization of this area, the layout, how to find things, and how to navigate your way through it. We'll also learn how to include a table or view, how to set properties for tables and for columns, database synchronization, and how to use virtual keys. The databases area consists of two main sections. The Application Explorer window pane on the left, where we navigate to different servers, tables, and views in the selected database. And the Properties pane on the right, which gets populated differently when we click on items in the Application Explorer. Note that we can use the splitter control between them to size each pane accordingly. This database has only one database referenced. The Enterprise Edition of Iron Speed Designer allows for multiple database servers of different types. So, let's first click on our database, in this case a Microsoft SQL Server 2008 database called Dev and Well Inspections. Note that I can both view and edit the connection string for this database. Be careful when editing the database connection string here, as you can easily lose your connection to the database if performed incorrectly. With our database selected, we can scroll through the list of tables and views that belong to this database. Tables or views referenced in this application are displayed bolder than those that are not. In this case, we can see that the ASP State Temp Applications table is quite gray. This means this table has not yet been referenced into this application. It is a good practice to only reference the tables and views in your application that you will actually use. You can always come back and reference others later. When I click on a table or view that has not been referenced, the pane on the right changes. I can now click on the Include an Application property and change it from No to Yes. We will be prompted by IronSpeed to confirm that this is what we actually want to do. No layout pages will be created at this point. Click OK to continue. Note that the color of this table will no longer be gray once the code for the data access layer has been generated by IronSpeed Designer. Once you've included a table or view in your application, you can now work with it. For example, when I click on the Clients table, the Properties pane on the right tells me that this table has been included in my application. It also tells me to allow Insert, Update, and Delete operations against this table for this application. Note, your table or view must be actually updatable within the database. If it is not, then you will likely get errors when you try and build your application. Many views that contain multiple tables, such as those used for grouping or summing data, would not be considered updatable, and this should be reflected in your choice here. I can now click on individual columns or fields for this new table and make changes to their properties. Note how the properties change as I click on different fields. When I click on the Client Support Email field, this re uh, reveals a number of things. For example, I can see that my validation type is email address, I can see that this is not a required field, and I can see that the field length is 150 characters in the database. If I want to change the required status to yes, I will click into the required property field and change it to yes. IronSpeed will now make sure that there is a valid value in this field when saving data. I could also change the default label text for this field. Looking down at the bottom left hand part of the properties pane, when I click on label text, you can see that it says client support email. I can click into my formula editor and change this to be something else if I want. Now, this saves an extraordinary amount of time when there are many references to the field label throughout our application. So, changing the default label descriptor here will automatically be reflected everywhere in my application. One of the great features of IronSpeed Designer is the ability to round trip changes between application and changes to the database. This is considered a key feature of agile development. What does this mean? This means that I can make changes to my database while developing my application at the same time. 
there are three different ways to work with synchronizing your application with your database. The first way is just to investigate whether there are any changes at all, but not actually have to commit to the synchronization process. I can do this by clicking the menu item Databases at the top of the screen. This reveals an option, Synchronize Database Schema Scan Only. Selecting this option will allow IronSpeed to compare what it knows about the database previously against the current schema or design of the database right now. Clicking in this option may take a few moments. IronSpeed, when finished, will display some content in the output pane down at the bottom and will tell us whether any changes were found or not. In this example, scrolling down the list of tables and views reveals that changes have occurred in the Wells table. A field was deleted in this case and then re-added, probably due to a spelling mistake. If I choose to accept these changes, I can do it either for all of the found changes or just for each change table or view, one at a time. To accept all changes, click Databases, Synchronize Database Schema. To accept changes for an individual table, select that table and then right-click Accept Schema Changes. IronSpeed will now accept those changes and update what it knows about the database schema. You may repeat this process as often as required. IronSpeed Designer has a wonderful feature called Virtual Keys. This feature allows us to create primary and foreign keys to tables and views that otherwise do not have a primary key assigned in the database, a relationship defined between two tables in that database, or the database is read-only and changes of any kind are not allowed. Virtual Keys in IronSpeed Designer also allows me to create a relationship between a table and a view, something that is not possible in most database servers. So an example, in my Wells table I have a field called Superintendent. I want, to, I want this field to be generated and populated as a drop-down list in my layout pages. And I want the source data for this drop-down to come from a special view that I have created in the database called VW Superintendents. This view consists a list of people who work for the company uh, that have a role of superintendents. In order to use this view in my application and to create a virtual relationship against another table or view, I first have to assign a virtual primary key to this view. So, moving down the list, I can see in gray, here's my view VW Superintendents. I know because it's gray that it is yet to be included in my application. So that's the first thing that I want to do. And we'll do that. Iron Speed will give us our little include message again. Now, when that's done, the next step that we have to do is to actually assign a virtual primary key. Note in our properties box, we have now a drop down for virtual primary key and I'm going to now make this field in this view the virtual primary key because obviously you can't do that in the database. Now I will move back up to my Wells table click on the superintendent ID field and you'll note now uh, for this field you can see that there is a property that says virtual foreign key. I can now click the ellipsis scroll down the list until I see VW Superintendents, select the Superintendent ID field, and then click OK. We get a confirmation uh, dialog box from IronSpeed and we click OK. Now, we're almost done. The last step is to set the display foreign key as value for this field. Although we now have a relationship between the Wells table and the view VW Superintendents, we do not want to view the foreign key value itself in our dropdown. So before we perform this step, viewing the superintendent dropdown shows what is displayed before we set the display foreign key as value. Selecting the dropdown, we can see the foreign key value from the view. Clearly, this is not what we want. Let's go back to the databases area, click the display as field, and you can see that Iron Speed has sorted out and suggested um, a valid display foreign key as value. All we need to do is turn it on. To do that, I'm going to click the checkbox. At this point now, I will go back, I will rebuild the application, and then show you the result. I have rebuilt my application, 
And now when I look at my Add Wells page and I click the drop down, you can see that the superintendent's name now appears. This is good. So what we've done is we've created a relationship between a table and a view and in fact a filtered view and that uh, serves our purposes uh, absolutely perfectly. In this video we learned how to use simple navigation to navigate our way through the databases tab area, how to change properties of columns or fields for tables and views, how to synchronize databases and how to implement virtual keys. For more information please contact the author at www.ironspeedmvp.com or send us an email to sales at ironspeedmvp.com or use the following phone numbers if it suits you. I'd like to thank you again for watching this video. Have a great day.